That's awesome. So we just had some questions. So um, uh, we'll do intros. I usually give people like till five after to get, you know, to get in. But Brandon hasn't updated uh, his LinkedIn yet with Elevate. And I usually have them put hashtags like, you know, hashtag SDR, hashtag cold calling 80 to 100 dials. Blah, blah, blah. So do you have any recommendations? And we'll, we'll get more into it later. But, um, you know, and then some of them will put like, soon just might put uh, Muslim in tech or uh, black in tech or Latinx in tech or uh, women in tech or what. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on, on that. Yeah, um, you know, I think your LinkedIn profile is an extension of you, who you are and, and what you want people to be able to see, right? Um, I think it can get a little bit tricky when you start using terms like Muslim in tech. I think women in tech is is obviously um, one of the more popular ones. You know, there's there's a whole movement um, around creating the diversity around the technology industry, especially within sales. Um, it, it can get a little bit tricky when you use religion or faith or, or things like that, um, just because there are still biases out there um, that it, it's it's tough, but you know, I think we're all aware that there are some biases out there. But I think stating what it is that you want to be able to accomplish with your LinkedIn profile is going to be the best way for you to put out what is that uh, you know extension of yourself that you want uh, people to be able to see. So, um, you know, if you're an SDR, if you are a communicator, if you are somebody who feels like they are stronger at, you know, maybe cold calling than, than maybe writing or copywriting or things like that, then definitely put that out there because that's what you want people to see. Does that help? That does yeah, help. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like staying away from um, religion and ethnicity and like those inner identities, I think is a great point because there are um, biases out there like Marco said so I definitely agree with that 100%. I just because throwing that out there to like open the conversation basically I'm not saying that she put that on her LinkedIn but no absolutely yeah. absolutely like I just for like everyone to know I didn't put anything regarding my religion or identity on LinkedIn but um, it was just an idea that you threw out there, but, and I'm not saying it's a negative, but I'm just saying, like, just because there's some biases out there, I wouldn't want to put that up as my forefront, you know? Because regardless, I do wear, like, um, regardless, if, when someone meets me, I do wear the hijab. So, like, they will know right from the bat that I am Muslim, but that doesn't define what my characteristics of what I can be as an SDR or BDR. Awesome. Um, we will be talking about identity. We will be talking about how you define yourself and how you want others to to be able to see you. So we will be getting into that. All right. I'm excited. Let's give it one more minute for uh, for folks to join, and um, and then and then we will kick this off. I I'm so excited for this chat. Yay. Um, okay. And just so you guys know, so. Marco's in the Elevate community. So, you know, you can ask him quite like if you didn't get your question answered today or what, you know, you can ask him later. Um, and then just a little bit of uh, housekeeping before we get started. As Marco gets going, like he's going to be in the flow of what he's talking about. So let's put questions in the chat and then he'll grab them as he can uh, insert those questions into what he's talking about. And it is a dialogue and we will leave room at the end for like a Q&A. Uh, you know, the last 15 minutes, um, but nothing's off the, you know, uh, off the table. Like uh, if you have a question, ask it, don't, don't be, uh, you know, like uh, shy or afraid, or you're asking the wrong question or it doesn't apply, like ask it. Um, the only questions that are no good are the ones you don't ask because you never get answers to them. Right. So that's my, that's my teacher mentality. So um, definitely. Okay. So, okay, you guys, I'm super excited to introduce Marco Santa Maria. He actually uh, works fully remote uh, from Colombia, and um, he works with SDRs, BDRs, AEs, like that transition from SDR to AE, like all of that stuff. Um, and he works with them 
uh, before they get into the role, but really like helping them become successful, mentoring and coaching. And he's got, uh, I don't know if he's ready to talk about the programs because he's doing some revamping, but hopefully he will uh, share with you how you guys, once you're in that role, how you can work with him to ensure that, that you're successful in that role. And uh, and then that you're on the right trajectory of where you want to go. Do you want to become an AE? Do you want to become an a, a, um, an SA? Do you want to move into management, customer success manager? Like where do you want to go? And um, he is just in line with with elevates goals of like you guys changing your life and having this amazing opportunity to be in tech um and not be pushed out of your community because your salary is not where it needs to be for you to stay in your own community so that's uh, what he's all about and i'll let him continue and and introduce himself and stuff that i missed but uh the floor is yours so welcome thank you so much jamie and um good morning or good afternoon to all you guys depending on where in the world uh you guys are at but um Thank you again for taking the time to join us uh, for this special conversation. Um, when Jamie invited me to be a part of this fireside chat, I'll admit um, I was a little bit apprehensive. Um, in discussions like this, um, I've been a part of these type of conversations in your guys' seat. I like to be part of the audience. I like to uh, hear about how people think about the world of um, tech sales and being um, an SDR and, and sales development as a whole. But um, after listening into these types of conversations for a while, you guys will see it. You're, you're going to start hearing the same exact advice. Okay. Um, and I'm not saying that their advice is wrong. You know, the reason why you hear a lot of the same advice uh, repeated all the time, uh, there's a reason. Um, it works. But, you know, for, for me, um, I like to think about things a little bit different. And, and I told Jamie, I said, look, I'd, I'd be open to doing it, but I have to tell you that the way that I think about the world of sales development and, and coaching is a little bit different than, than most people. I don't like to, um, you know, I don't like really to tell you guys exactly what to do. Um, one of the things that I always say on LinkedIn is if you ever read or hear me telling you guys what to do, believe only half of it, all right? If I tell you guys what not to do, then then take that into heart, okay? Because um, I think for me, going through the experiences that I have in the sales development world, I can give you more information and, and more helpful tips on the things uh, not to do so that you don't waste your time doing that and actually get into the things that, uh, that you should be doing. So um, uh, when I told Jamie that I would be interested to do it, um, I said, I, the only way that I would really be have uh, would be able to have a, a good enough conversation with you guys and, and what something that I actually believe in um, is if I go a little bit deeper into the way that you think about sales development. Um, and I'll get into that in, in a little bit, but basically my, my background comes from psychology and sociology and I happen to get into sales. And, and the way that I think about sales is um, more from a, an internal approach, you know, why do we do things? How do we do things? Why do we um, you know, give context behind the things that we do? And, and that's how we really see success. So, you know, um, you know, we could take the next 45 minutes and talk about step by step about what to do on how to land your dream job, how to cold call and email like a professional, or even how to fast track your sales career to six figures. Um, now, as I say that, you guys are probably like, yeah, I, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that. And, um, you know, I do go over my own methodologies uh, within my coaching programs. But to be honest with you, uh, none of that actually matters or will ever mean anything if you guys don't understand the intent behind every activity that, uh, that you guys are going to be doing. Um, and that's what I want to be able to, to talk to you guys about today. Now, um, that might sound a little bit difficult, uh, but here's a spoiler alert. Getting the job, that's the super easy part, okay? Cold calling, handling rejection, doing your prospecting, closing prospects on meetings, following up on those meetings, that that's the can be difficult at some times part, 
But being able to understand why you're doing a specific task at any given time, how you're accomplishing it, doing that day in, day out, yeah, using that mental motivation that you need to get the job done, that's that's the tough part, right? Um, so that's why when Jamie and I spoke, we, we decided to call this the, the SDR mindset. Um, now, the, the term mindset, you guys might have heard that many times before, but I think that the way that you think about the SDR mindset, um, I wanna challenge you guys to, to think about that a little bit differently. So uh, what I wanna do first is I want to get into my background a little bit, um, talk to you guys about where I come from, um, you know, what I've done in my career so that you guys have an understanding of why it is that I actually think this way um, and why I encourage you guys to, to think the same way as well. So I'm originally from New York City and I went to university for a psychology and sociology degree. Um, my parents wanted me to become a physical therapist, so I went to a med school thinking that I was gonna do um, you know, biology, organic chem, all this stuff, and, and get my uh, degree and become a doctor. Um, science is not my thing. Actually doing the, the chemistry labs and trying to learn about all of these things, I, it just didn't make sense to me. But when I started studying psychology and sociology, understanding how people's brains work, how uh, people interact within a society, that's the stuff that actually you know, got me going a little bit. Uh, so when I graduated from university, I decided I wanted to go into graduate school for social work. Um, so I submitted my grad school application and decided, you know what, how am I going to be able to pay for grad school? Let me go apply for a job. So um, I ended up getting a job as a part-time sales assistant to help pay off grad school. And then my letter from uh, the grad school university came in and it said that I applied for the graduate program a week too late and that I had to wait a full semester before I could actually go into the social work program. So I said, all right, I have to wait a little bit, but um, I have this job now, so let me work and save some money until I start that program. So um, I started as a sales assistant, basically just doing uh, odd tasks for this um, uh, company that was doing uh, reprints for a magazine. And um, three months later, I actually was invited to take on the job and, and do it full time. Uh, so I was now working 40 hours a week. Um, doing the sales assistant job. Another three months later, I got uh, another promotion into an actual sales rep position. Um, three months of doing that, I was you know, learning a little bit more about sales and how to close and how to speak to people. Um, and then I received another promotion. So within a nine month span, I received already three promotions within this company. And I was already earning uh, as much money as somebody who was working in social work for five years. So I decided, you know what, um, my my current goals at the moment are to make as much money as possible. So I'm going to just stick with sales. So um, it was a, a, a very interesting next uh, few years because I, I tried my hand at a different uh, at several different types of sales positions. So as I mentioned before, I was working for a magazine company um, selling reprints and copyrights. And then I moved into uh, banking and finance. I was working for Chase Bank, um, you know, in, a, in an actual retail bank, helping people to open accounts as well as to, um, you know, how to invest their money properly. After that, I went into recruitment, so which is a different type of sales. You're working with uh, companies, helping them to find the right talent uh, to, to work with their departments. And then after that, that's when I found uh, technology. Now, uh, not sure exactly where or what stage of your career you guys are in, um, but by the time I actually found the tech world as an SDR, um, I was a little bit older already. I was, I was 30 years old when I started my first SDR role. And at that time, if you're 30, um, you know, walking into the tech industry, you're, you're kind of a dinosaur. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I used that to my advantage because even though it was my first role um, as an SDR, um, I already had 
uh, roughly about eight years of sales experience under my belt after graduating. So I knew that if I wanted to advance as um, uh, a sales rep within the tech industry, I needed to do the SDR role, even if it felt like a step backwards for me. Um, so in order for me to get out of the SDR seat, I knew I had to do the SDR role better than anybody on the sales floor. Um, so that was my that was my intention. I, I knew that I wanted to get into a closing role. I wanted I knew that I wanted to advance my career and that I wanted to make as much money as possible. Now, knowing that I wanted to get out of the role and knowing that I had the experience, what came natural to me was helping the younger people, um, you know, the people on my team who were younger, uh, it might have been their first sales role in general, but, uh, you know, it was it was my sort of motivation to to help them, to, to, to get them to, to be advanced as well, because as a company, if we all did well, then, you know, we would, uh, we would get a, a nice bonus at the end of the year. But my management team, they they saw the way that I worked with the other people, um, the other SDRs on my team, and uh, they asked me to move into a management position. So I moved into a team lead role, um, and then eventually two years later, um, I was asked to then relocate to London and look over the SDR team uh, in Europe. So I did that from 2016 to 2021, and within that time, I interviewed hired and trained over 100 SDRs in my career and have sort of built an understanding of, you know, what it takes to be successful as an SDR, um, you know, what it takes to find the role that you're looking for, how to succeed and be able to move into, uh, you know, the next step in your sales career. So, um, one, when things went into lockdown, um, a couple of years ago, it was a, it was pretty rough in the UK. Um, you know, in the UK, we went into lockdown for more than a year and a half straight uh, compared to, uh, you know, people in the US, my friends and family who pretty much came out of lockdown after three or four months and went back into to normal life. And being stuck um, in lockdown for 18 months sort of led me and, and my wife to decide that we wanted to be able to uh, take a little bit more control of our life and, you know, wanted to do something that we did, that we enjoyed a lot more, um, which was traveling. So in the middle of 2021, we decided to uh, sell all of our belongings, pack up our bags and uh, start traveling the world full time. And um, we did a lot of Central America, Latin America and Europe for a good 12 months before we came back here to Colombia and decided to settle here, um, which is where we've been for the past six months. So uh, that's uh, that's sort of my my story, my my little history of, um, you know, how I got to where I am today. And, um, you know, I wanted to sit down with you guys and, and, and tell you a little different story about sales development because most of the people that you're going to encounter um, whether it's mentors peers people that you see on LinkedIn or on YouTube they're going to be telling you a lot about uh, best practices and, and things about what to do and how to structure your day how to plan your day how to be better at cold calling all fantastic stuff like I said these guys they they, they say these things for a reason because it's work um, but I, I want to really get into talking to you guys more about how to think about sales development, how to think about your own motivation, and how to be able to arm yourself with uh, all of the necessary um, and important resources to be able to be successful within not only your role, but be successful in your entire career, and to be able to get the things out of life that, uh, that you want. So um, where I want to be able to start is to, to talk to you about, you know, where I've really been able to see the most success coming out of SDRs. Um, and for me, I've seen some of the most interesting things happen as a result of countering rather than the game plan that someone may have had going into that activity. So what does that mean? Um, it's fantastic to to have a plan. I think uh, you know understanding what your 
particular goals are and how you're going to get there and what are the specific tasks and activities um, that you need to do in order to achieve that particular goal. I think that's all important. And, and that's something that I do cover with every one of my students. Um, however, the ability to be able to move around and, and be fluid and flexible when things don't go the original intended plan, um, that's a lot more difficult than, than coming up with that complex plan um, based on that way that you saw the scenario or situation in your head. Um, being able to react to certain moments when uh, you know you might get uh, thrown off kilter or be taken off that particular plan, which I think um, you know if you're if you're here today, that may have happened to you in in the past year, right? Um, things have happened with the economy, or it's been a lot more difficult to find a job, or um, you know interviewing might have felt a little bit more difficult uh, recently. All of this stuff may have thrown you off your original plan. And um, the idea of countering and things not going the way that you want it, having to respond based on that, it's to me, that's a lot closer to reality. It's a lot closer to the things that we actually experience in life. And um, you know, helping you guys to understand how to be able to bounce back from uh, specific adversities or specific situations that might come uh, day to day. I think that's a lot more important to being a successful SDR. Um, any questions about that so far? None? Okay, cool. So, um, guys, I'm not here to talk to you about any sort of radical mindset. Um, I'm, I'm here to talk to you guys and, and help you think about a different buyer persona in the world of sales development, a different target customer. And that customer is, um, is you guys. It, it's yourself. I want to challenge your current thoughts on what makes a successful SDR. I want to encourage you guys to define what that would be for yourself. Um, and even before you start applying to another company and researching as much as you can about that industry or um, you know that opportunity, you need to start doing your internal research to really get to know yourself. Um, so this is where we're going to get right into it. Uh, we're going to start with a very quick exercise. And um, you guys can come off mute if you would like to, or you guys can use the uh, chat box uh, for this exercise. Either one is going to, to work just fine. So um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to name uh, an individual person. And you're going to use three words to describe who that person is. Okay, so. Um, I want you guys to throw it into the chat. I want you to guys to give me three words that you would use to describe that person. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on uh, some of you guys one-on-one -on -one to tell me what your answers are. are. And then we're gonna go through um, uh, a few people and then we'll, we'll wrap up uh, at the end of that, okay? So as an example, if I were to use the, the name Elon Musk, right? Uh, you might say Tesla, CEO or SpaceX or, or something like that, right? Or, or you might say innovative. Um, some people might even say controversial or some people might even say influential, okay? So I'm going to name, uh, I'm gonna name somebody and I want you guys to use the chat and I want you guys to use, or I want you guys to list three words that you would use to describe this person, okay? Um, so the first person that I'm going to say is Bad Bunny, right? So guys, hit up the chat. Let me know. Use three words to describe. How would you describe Bad Bunny? What are the first three words that come up? Can you repeat the name? I'm sorry. We're talking about Bad Bunny. Okay, so we have a few already. Tiara, let's uh, let's call on you. So you picked rapper, creator, and mysterious. Talk me through sort of you know where where these terms came from. 
Um, from what I know about the person, they make music. Mm-hmm. I I want to assume that he's a rapper, but I really don't know. Um, and I feel like if he writes his own music, then he is creative. Even if he doesn't, then he is creative in the way that it is uh, put out. And uh, uh, I've never actually seen his face, so okay. I would say mysterious. OK, cool. Perfect. Thank you for that. All right. Um, so you guys put in some other words for him. We'll get into those in a second. I'm going to name the second person. I want you guys to do the same exact thing. OK. So the second person that we're going to be um, describing is Rihanna. So throw in three terms that you guys, the first three terms that come to your head about Rihanna and throw those into the chat. Awesome. Okay, Sephora, I'm going to pick on you for this one. All right, so we have confident, business savvy, and unbothered. So talk me through, uh, you know, why you selected those terms. Mm -hmm. I think Rihanna is, she doesn't have to do the most. Like a lot of people in the industry really need to be out there. And I feel like she's just so confident in the work that she's done that she doesn't, like her work speaks for herself. Mm -hmm. uh, business savvy, she is a self-made millionaire, a billionaire, I think at this point. And, um, you know, with the Fenty brand, she just knew what the market was missing and was able to cater to that and unbothered. Um, you can see that with like, um, you know, recently with her pregnancy, she wears what she wants. Like she just does her own thing and still has like a huge big following. Like she's all of those three. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you very much. Cool. All right. So we're going to do the last name. We're going to do this one really quickly. And then I'm going to call on one of you guys to, to talk about uh, the words that you chose. So the last person that we're going to describe today is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Awesome, keep them coming in. Okay, so um, let's pick on Michelle. So you have actor, wrestler, and fit. So let's talk about those. Uh, you know, why were these the first three terms that came up? Um, those were the first three that popped um, in my head for him. <laughs> um, just knowing that he um, just had this multi-talented Mm -hmm. Um, I think he started off as a wrestler and then um once he became well known, became an actor, I think I'm guessing. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, just multi talented and um definitely um fit. Um I think um that has been uh one of his priorities since probably forever. So mm -hmm. yeah, those are the first three that popped in my head. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, cool. So thank you guys for participating in that exercise. Um, what did we discover here? We discovered that some people, uh, or I think all people, they're, they're defined in several different ways, right? So some people are defined by their job, um, something they accomplished, Maybe they're defined by a company that they're uh, tied to or, or affiliated, affiliated with, or, or they might have worked with uh, before. And others are defined about, you know, by how they make people feel. So what I want you guys to, to really consider is how do you want to be defined? Do you want to be defined by your job? Be, do you want to be defined by your successes? Do you want to be defined by your impact, right? And the impact could be 
the impact could be to your team, the impact could be to your company, or the impact could be to your family. Um, you know, a lot of people that I speak to when it comes to sales, I ask them, why Why do you want to be in sales? And you know, some of the most honest answers that I've received is I, I have a family to feed. And this is going to give me the opportunity to give them as much of that food that I want to give them as possible. So, um, you know, your impact can come in so many different ways. And I want you guys, as you as you're doing this, keep in mind that how you want to define yourself is going to be different than how others will define you. But the most important thing for you guys is your how and your why. Okay, so um, this next part is going to be especially important to the questions that you're going to ask both your prospects and yourself. Um, Anytime there's a specific goal or target that you guys identify uh, for yourself or, you know, identify with your prospects, um, you know, you might come up with things like, I want to earn 100K by 2025, or um, I want to put down a deposit on a house by November of this year. Um, or if you're speaking to your prospects, you know, they, they tell you that they have a project that needs to be completed by the end of Q3. Now, one of the most beneficial questions that's going to help you to do your discovery, to help you identify yourself, to be able to help you identify your prospects and, and what their real needs is to ask them, why is that important? You know, why that specific goal? Why that specific date? What is there to lose if that goal is not achieved by a specific time? Or on the flip side, what is it that you guys have to gain if that goal is accomplished by a certain time? Okay, so um, when you guys are really trying to understand how you want to be defined, the key to asking yourself, uh, you know, what is it that I want to be defined as is asking why. Why do you want to be defined as that? Why do you want to be defined as an SDR? Why do you want to be defined as successful? Why do you want to be uh, you know, defined as somebody who made uh, a huge impact on the, the business? What is it going to do for you? What will you gain from it? Or what will you lose if, you don't, uh, if you're not able to, to accomplish it? And the same thing goes with your prospects. Take that mentality that you have to give to yourself and, and do that with your prospects as well. If you're able to uncover something that they want to be able to accomplish, asking them, why is that an important task that you want to be able to, to fulfill? If you need to be, if you need to uh, complete this by the end of Q3, what will happen if you don't? Or what will what will happen if you are able to do it? So, um, you know, a lot of the successes come from digging deeper being able to take a, a, a much further look into why something needs to happen or why something is the case uh, in order to truly understand, you know, what is that significant impact that that's going to make that it needs to be, okay? So asking yourself that question, why does this need to be, is going to help for you, is going to be helpful for you guys when you're making any decision, right? Um, and when you're speaking to your prospects, it's going to be the emotional catalyst of what actually closes the sale. Now, we talked about um, emotional catalysts and, and selling to emotions is such a big, big step of um, being an SDR. Now, it doesn't matter what company you go to, it doesn't matter what product you sell or service you sell. The key to being successful as an SDR is being able to truly understand why your prospect needs to purchase that specific item. What is it that they're going to be able to accomplish? What is going to be a result um, that they're going to be able to achieve if they buy whatever it is that you're selling? So we have to figure out um, what is it that's going to be able to push that sale over the edge? So. We just spent uh, you know, the last 10 to 15 minutes talking about you, you, you. you know, how do you find out what you want in life? How are you going to get there? 
Um, but when you get into the SDR role and, and you're ready to start reaching out to prospects, how do we actually use that information that we, we dug from ourselves to, to, to find the motivation that you need um, to use it on your prospects? So basically everything that you just did about asking your why and learning about yourself, you take that and you throw it out the window. Why? Because it's no longer about you anymore. It's all about the prospect. It's all about understanding what makes them tick, what makes them happy, what they need to be successful in their own lives, what they need to be successful in their own roles, and using that as a way to be able to have that conversation with them. Okay, so driving the conversation based on the emotion that you're able to, uh, to, to extract from them. How do we get there? And the same questions that you ask uh, yourself about why you want certain things in life. You know, you, you, you asked your, you know, the company that you're going to be working with, anybody that um, will help you within your sales career is going to be able to help you with specific techniques and tactics to ask your prospect questions and get them to open up. But the key here is how do you use that information? What are you going to do to extract the, the right information that you need to ensure that you're providing the best product and you're helping your prospect to understand, hey, this is the, this is the right project and service that you need to accomplish whatever it is that you need to accomplish. And again, that's gonna go back to asking them why. Why are things so important? What is it going to do for them if they can't accomplish it? What it will do for them if they can't accomplish it? So um, again, a lot of times you're going to hear a lot of advice about how to conduct cold calls, how to write up the perfect email, how to get your prospect to respond. But like I said earlier, none of that is going to matter unless you truly understand why you're doing it. What is the intent behind it? The most successful SDRs that I've ever worked with have been ones that have been extremely curious about how things work, how problems arise, how you fix problems, how um, certain things work. And being able to ask those questions within your role are going to be able to open up a world of um, knowledge for you guys to be able to do your job properly, okay? Um, any questions from you guys before we move on? Is this making sense, quick you question. guys? <laughs> um, yeah, I have a quick question regarding um, how do uh, when you're when you said something along the lines of um, you have to be curious about how the problem arises and how everything works. Mm -hmm. um, who do you ask those questions, and who do you? find to give you the background of the product and how it came to be and why they changed what they changed for it to work. So every time you join um, a company, you're going to be onboarded and you go through a training program. Now, the company will tell you how the product works. Um, but for me, what I have found to always be the best way to learn about a product is to listen to the conversations that uh, listen to like for example recorded conversations that um, sales reps or account executives have had with potential clients right so um, every every company is going to have a different issue uh, that they have that they need a solution for which is it's why you're cold calling these guys and, and trying to sell your product now um, recorded demos are always going to be the best um, way to to be able to find out information about issues, how issues arise. Um, you know, normally the, the customers or the clients are gonna be the ones that provide that best information, but because you're new and you're not gonna have that opportunity to speak to these customers directly to say, hey, what problems do you have and have this problem come up? Um, usually recorded conversations, and you can even go onto YouTube and, and see uh, and look up recorded demos for different companies that you might be interested in. And, um, those demos go deep into what are the problems that have come up that uh, these organizations actually need to find a solution for. That makes absolute sense. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Um, I saw a hand go up. I think that was Sephora. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say um, 
like I, I agree with what you're saying because I've been on LinkedIn a lot and like what you're saying is are you suggesting like maybe partner with like your fellow AE and understand what the pain points are for like the prospects or um, you know maybe reach out to like customer success like partners on your team understand what issues are arising like is, is that what you're saying like really understand what the problems are for like in the industry you support Yep, absolutely. So um, back when I was running my team, uh, they had their specific structured onboarding. Um, however, for me, what I did is I encouraged them to go to the different departments uh, that might not be part of their onboarding and have conversations with them. You know, how are you seeing the industry? Uh, what are the problems that you're seeing with the clients? You know, that that you're working with because the way that, for example customer success is speaking to a client and obtaining information about uh, how they're using the product is completely different than how marketing is going to be talking to a client. So being able to understand how the product works from the different eyes of uh, uh, you know the lateral departments that you're going to be working with is a fantastic way for you to, to be able to learn about um, you know how this product works and, and why it's even being purchased. Right. OK, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Any other questions about that? OK, cool. So um, we're going to do a little bit of a rewind and, and do another quick exercise based on the um, the why question that uh, that we talked about. So remember, the thing I said is before you can even understand anything about another company that you're going to be working with, before you start doing your research on, well, who is the hiring manager that I'm going to be speaking with and what's the product that I'm going to be uh, selling, your first research needs to be done internally with figuring out who you are, what you want, why you want it, how you're going to be able to get it. So um, I'm going to ask for a volunteer to, to talk to me about your current why. And then I'm going to push you a little bit further and see if we can actually get uh, a deeper why from you. Any volunteers? Jamie, yes. I, I'm not volunteering. I just had a question. So what have you found in working with SDRs who um, just go off and start selling? Like they get a role and they don't do some of this internal work. Mm -hmm. Like what are what what's happening? What well, like in other words, why why do they want to invest in themselves to do this internal work first? Like, what what are the results? I guess Is, am I asking that right? <laughs> yeah, no, I completely uh, completely understand what uh, what you're saying. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sidestep this a little bit, but I'm gonna answer the question um, indirectly. So, I'm gonna remember what I told you earlier. Don't listen to me when I tell you what to do, listen to me when I tell you what not to do. Um, so working with a lot of SDRs, um, I've seen successful SDRs, I've seen um, SDRs that couldn't quite get it. What I've seen the most is the main reason why people aren't successful as SDRs um, is because they don't do it long enough to be able to learn from the mistakes that they made early in their career okay um now that might sound a little bit confusing however i want you to understand something most people give up on sales or being an sdr because they ran into challenges they ran into difficulties that forced them to say i'm not good at this and i, I don't really like this so i'm going to do something else when really it was a mistake that they needed to learn from whether they take it into the into that current role or they move on to another company and and, and take what they learned and move into to that next position um, the sooner you give up right the, the, the sooner that you decide i i don't want to do this is going to be the reason why you're not successful in it because you just don't give it enough time now any salesperson can tell you that they have messed up very, very early in their career a number of times, okay? Um, the reason why they're successful today is because they learned from those mistakes and they were able to, to take it forward. But the only way that you're going to be able to say to yourself, I need to be able to understand what I did wrong, how I did it wrong, and do the opposite so that I can um, you know, see, see success in, in what I'm doing, um, is because they understand why they're doing it. They understand what is the, their motivation for, 
for having to be successful and they know okay this is why i wanted to do this in the first place this is you know the the reason and or these are the goals the specific goals that i have in mind uh, and that i need to be able to achieve in order for me to get there i need to consistently learn keep doing better and keep improving and that's what pushes these guys to the edge these this is what pushes them forward to to say i'm going to learn from my mistake i'm going to do it differently and i'm going to do better Okay, so understanding what you're gonna be able to do for yourself, understanding why you wanna be able to do it is what's going to give you guys the discipline to keep going even when times are not great. And when you can get past those times that are not great, you're gonna see a lot happier times in the future. Sephora, you had a question. Um, I wanted to answer uh, your question. I think you had asked like what, what our why was. Yes, yes, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for me <clears throat> personally, um, I resonate a lot with what you said about like joining tech in like when you were 29. So I'm actually 29 right now and looking to pivot and, and switch careers. And, and you know, uh, I'm really exploring the idea of join, uh, being in the tech SaaS space. And so I do feel like um, I've had I've been eight months now <laughs> trying to to land a role, and so I've had the opportunity to see what works, what doesn't work, and um, you know, um, reach out and I've interviewed and you know even gotten to the next like through the third step, like hiring manager and then VP of sales and everything, and I you know it's easy to feel the discouragement and everything, but my why that keeps me you know keep looking and I know I'm competing against other SDRs that are, you know, actually in the market that have gotten laid off. So laid off. So there are people who have um, experience and I'm coming from like an HR operations background. I've been in the banking world. And so it's very new to me. But what keeps me going and not being discouraged is um, I'm really looking to get into a space where I can learn something new. And a lot of the I know the negative connotation that's with SDRs that I'm, I'd be going back to an entry level role. I would be taking a pay cut you know, right now, but I know the potential that's there. I know that if I do really well at my job, there is, you know, you could be making a lot of money. I like to have different goals and objectives and even challenges. Um, I just completed my second marathon last week and it's not easy. I know like I've had some times where I didn't want to train. I live in Toronto and so the weather is not really good here in, in the winter times and I've had to train in the winter and stuff. So I feel like my why is that I, I'm. I want to to learn. I want to um, to hit goals. I'm a really goal oriented person. That and I, I'm not getting that in my current job right now. And so that's my why. Okay, cool. So um, first of all, the fact that you finish your your second marathon, unbelievable. That's a, that's amazing. I think in your next interview, when somebody mm -hmm. says to you, uh, you know. Uh, Sephora, why should we hire you? I think you should tell them, I completed two marathons. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you should say it. I completed two marathons. And it's going to force them to think. Finishing two marathons, what does that mean? What does that have to do with this role? Mm -hmm. And then they're going to start thinking, I've never finished a marathon. Nobody on my team has finished a marathon. In order to finish a marathon, you probably started training eight months, nine months, 10 months, mm -hmm. a year in advance. You had to change your entire routine of how you're going to um, uh, adapt your lifestyle, adapt your uh, habits and behaviors so that you are performing best for when you have to do the marathon. And if you already know the process and if you have the mentality of how to achieve that for a marathon, that is very easily translatable into how to prepare yourself mentally, how to prepare yourself physically, and what is the specific routine that you need to have to be successful as an SDR. So make sure you use that to your advantage. Right. right. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to challenge you a little bit. So, you know, the things that you mentioned is you want to learn something new, you mm -hmm. like a challenge, and you want to earn some more money. Why is that important? Uh, well, it's important because I have two little girls and a mortgage to pay. So I need to, I'm willing to take this pay cut now and work hard knowing that I could make more. So the money aspect is a very, um, the living here in Toronto is not a cheap place. <laughs> so yeah, that's for one. 
Um, I want to hit goals because I feel I'm capable of doing more than I, I have to offer in my current role. I think I could really add value to whichever employer I would be going to next. And I like to sell in my current role. So operations, I we support our employees. I really want to solve problems for you know, whatever uh, company I'm at, whatever the product is, I want to make sure that, um, you know, the product that would be we would be offering would be able to um, help companies in their with their with their problems. Okay, mm -hmm. cool, awesome. I appreciate that. Um, after this session, I want you to um, you know go back. I want you to reflect on what your whys are, and mm -hmm. I want you to take that. I really want you to take that a little bit deeper, right? Um, take the two questions that I asked. If you're not able to achieve a specific goal by a specific time, right? Um, what what problem is that going to raise for you? Or if you are able to achieve that at a cer uh, certain time, what benefit will that give to you, right? And and specifically, I want to challenge you on the reason that you said um, I want to be able to help out a company to sell whatever their product is. Why does helping another company um, mean so much to you, right? And maybe you reflect back on it later on and say, well, maybe that's not important, but what's important is what I'm able to achieve and, and I'm able to tell my kids in the future, I had this particular goal, this is how I achieved it, and this is what I did to achieve it, right? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that's more of a reason uh, rather than actually trying to do that and hit specific goals for the company. So um, I want you to challenge yourself and, and really take it uh, a step further and to, to understand why you even would mention that as your why. Right. Well, All right. Yeah. Cool. You. Thanks, Sephora. So does he have a question? Yeah, I had a quick question regarding mm -hmm. um, mistakes made in like when you were talking about earlier SDRs that are successful. Mm -hmm. Um, they realize that they were, they learn from their mistakes, but then when do they realize their mistakes or when do you, when do you identify, oh, this is a mistake and I need to fix up on this and brush up and, and, and move on. It's a little bit of a, a self-awareness exercise, right? And, and that's one of the key things. And you probably, you guys pro probably heard this a lot of times. Um, self-awareness is a very key trait in being a successful SDR. Um, you know, coaching from your manager or um, any of your peers that you're working with, if they're coaching you and saying, hey, we need to work on this, this is what we need to, to improve on. Um, those are things you should already be picking up. These are small cues on, okay, something here is not working. I have to be able to, to fix that. Um, and then as you, you know, you might go on in your career and you might be hearing some of the same things come up repeatedly. Those are the mistakes that I'm talking about need to be fixed. So the self-awareness is, okay, I realized that I made a mistake because I did this, or I was told that, you know, maybe trying it a different way is going to be the, um, you know, the method that I need to use in order to get the results that I want. So I have to identify that and then be able to, to make those particular changes. So things need to be immediate because if they're not immediate, then there's an issue with your self-awareness then that becomes a, a bigger problem when trying to be successful as an SDR. Makes so, sense. Thank you. So, so you need to have a little bit of uh, your own immediate self-awareness as well as understanding if maybe you receive coaching from your manager or from somebody else, why is it that that particular um, topic, feature, or idea is the one that's being discussed? All right, and then I have one last, one more sure. question. Um, let's just say hypothetically, um, you're doing everything that you can, like you can, or you were taught to do, um, and you don't. You're not seeing any momentum, or you're not seeing the ball moving, and you feel stuck, and you don't know who or where to contact because you don't. You don't understand the product as well as some of your other peers because you're new. Um, where do you go, or how do you communicate? Hey, I'm trying everything I'm doing. Like I'm trying everything I can, but still, I don't see any momentum. Exactly the way that you just did that. Oh, okay. You raise your hand, you talk to your manager, you talk to your peers, you talk to anybody and say, hey, I'm, I'm really doing everything that you guys told me. Um, I'm doing everything that, um, you know, the top performer is doing. I even sat down with the top performer to ask, to ask them to break down sort of their routine and something's not working. Can you, can you help me? 
So do you suggest before you do that to like go and contact your peers or the top performer on your um, on your team and to say, hey, let's get a one on one and see what you're doing and see if I can either copy that or, you know, mimic that in some way. Ultimately, your manager is going to be the person that is the most responsible for you. So you should go to them first. Right. But then you take their information. You try to do what it is that they, they told you or how they coached you to do it. Um, if you're not finding any sort of progress there, you go back to them and talk to them. Um, and then you start reaching out to, to other people. But ultimately, you're going to go to your manager first. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Marco. OK, awesome. Any other questions? I want to do a quick very quick um, exercise to wrap things up before we open it up for the final Q&A. You guys good with that? Perfect. All right, so um, we're going to do an exercise called uh, See, Feel, Hear, okay? And I want you guys to transport yourself to what is it? It's uh, May 18th. So I want you guys to transport yourself to 12 months in the future. It's currently May 18, 2024. Okay. So um, it's better if you do the this exercise um, with eyes closed, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Okay. So I want you to picture that it's uh, the 18th of May in 2024. It is the morning. You're waking up and you're getting ready for the day the way that you normally do okay now mind you this is 12 months from now so i want you to envision in your head that either you're working a specific job or you're in a specific location or whatever it is i want you to really think about where it is that you are 12 months from now okay so you're getting ready for the day you're waking up you normally do how are you feeling what are you seeing what are you hearing 12 months from now, uh, you know, think about the goals that you had today and where you thought you would be 12 months from now. How are you feeling about those particular goals? When you look around, do you see any of those goals have been accomplished already within the past 12 months? I'm not sure what your um, you know, future company's office policy is, but um, let's say that it's going to be the day that you're working from home and you're doing your, your normal pre-work ritual, whatever that is. Um, you know, I don't know if you're getting breakfast, if you're going to the gym, if you're doing meditation, if you're reading, watching TV, walking the dog, whatever it is. But imagine whatever that is that you would normally do in the morning before work. Think about it in your head. What are you seeing? When you look around, what are you hearing? How are you feeling? Okay, now you turn on your laptop, you're about to start your day, you're, you're feeling confident, you're feeling great. Um, you know, you might be ahead of your target or you open up your inbox and you have a meeting request there. How are you feeling? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? You know, you go into your morning huddle, uh, you're speaking with your teammates, I don't know if you're the manager or you're speaking to your manager, but um, you know you finish your team meeting and you're starting your day. Um, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? And then as you go through your day, again, you remember you're 12 months in. You have 12 months of solid work experience. You're moving. Things might be on autopilot where everything is a routine, running smoothly, perfectly, or you might be hustling. You're trying to change things up all the time. You're, you're trying as many things as possible to hit 200% of the target. Um, by the way, either way is 100% fine. Whether you're on autopilot and hitting 100% or you're hustling and hitting 200%, you're required to hit 100%, so it doesn't matter either way. So whatever method you're using, you know how are you feeling about it? What do you see in front of you? And what do you hear? Okay, so um, if your eyes were closed, you can go ahead and open that now. You're back to 2023, you're back to today. And I want you to think about how are you feeling? How are you feeling thinking about yourself 12 months from now? Are you feeling ready to push yourself even further to advance and develop yourself within your role and in your career? If the answer is yes, then you guys should visit my website, 
marcosantamaria.info. Sign up there. Be notified of anything that I'm doing. I'll be, I'm actually working on some new webinars, some new office hours for interviewing, and some um, some coaching programs as well. So sign up at the website. Let me be your SDR coach and let's work together. Um, as as an SDR coach, I, I actually don't really like um, receiving testimonials because for me, when, when I see an SDR who is successful, um, it's because of the work that they put in, right? It's a, the headache and the heartache that, uh, that these guys um, had to live with to, to get the results that they want. I just helped to guide them and facilitate them on the path to, to get there. So. I'm not big on testimonials, although I probably should go and get some more t testimonials, but um, I will be asking you guys to, to fill out a short form about today's session, um, what you thought about what we discussed today, and I would appreciate some raw, unadulterated feedback as it does help me to provide um, the best information and tips for you guys. But um, thank you guys for your time. This was absolutely awesome. Thanks, Marco. Um, he, uh, he can put it in um, our Slack channel, you guys, for the Elevate folks. And then, um, and remember, you guys can reach him in, like, in the Slack channel as well. So, uh, Marco, can you put the your survey in the Slack channel for them? Yes, I will. Okay, okay perfect. And then, um, uh, do you guys have any final questions for Marco? And then I just wanted to say for anyone outside of Elevate, um, Elevate is a 10-week program that helps you get into tech sales and change careers uh, for folks who have a barrier to entry, who have tried uh, to get into tech sales and are not able to get into tech sales. Um, and um, so, so, really both of us are working in or all of us are working in that same direction to make sure that you guys have the opportunity you want to to change your life the way you want to change it so yeah all right sephora do you have a question for marco sorry no that was uh, an accident but happy belated birthday i know you just celebrated a big milestone birthday thank you <laughs> Thank you, Marco. I really appreciate you answering all my questions, and I will be reaching out to you. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Any last questions, you guys? Awesome. This is fabulous. Thank you very much. And a, and a very different perspective and a different approach to uh, to the SDR role, so thank you. Thanks so much, Jamie. Thank you guys for taking the time to uh, sit down with me today. Um, yeah, as I as I mentioned, yeah, you know, I, I I want you guys to just really focus on yourselves, focus on what the things that you want out of life, um, why you want it, how you're going to get there. Use that as the foundation to drive your success, um, because every company that you work at is going to be different. When you, you can um, use the common denominator of yourself and your own motivations to push you forward. That's what's going to keep you going. So um, good luck, guys. I hope to see fantastic things from you guys.